Is this you? Do you slouch? Do you have tight hips, achy shoulders, weak glutes? Your day revolves around sitting and at the end of it, you just kind of feel meh. Do you wonder why your workout plan doesn't feel as effective as it could? Why it doesn't fix those weak glutes, tight shoulders, achy back? And it's like you can't get your body in the right position. And if this is you, and I know this is you because you're watching this and you're a smart, wonderful person, you have searched the internet for videos like how to fix your posture, how to bulletproof your shoulders, how to bulletproof your knees, how to fix your back in 20 seconds or less. You've clicked on one of those videos and you see this. And in the next 20 seconds, I'm gonna teach you how to bulletproof your back. And you do this video and not all of these are bad. Some of these can be good. Fitness Bro can give you some good advice and you might get relief for like 10 minutes or a day or you might add those into your post-workout stretches, but you still feel like this isn't working. I still kind of have this tight, meh, achy feeling all day. And what all, and while some of these videos can be good, what they don't teach you is how to get your body into proper alignment and how to know what that is and how to stay in proper alignment. All of these stretches, all of these workout plans, all of these fitness trips and hacks and ways to bulletproof or unbleep your whatever, aren't gonna get you anywhere unless you know how to get into alignment. So in this video, we're gonna go from head to toe on how to get your body into the best possible alignment. So you can have a strong foundation for whatever you do in your workout or in your activities of daily life. Now, we're gonna start with our feet. Now, while you may be thinking she's being crazy again, I don't have feet issues. I'm really good at using my feet. I'm a really good walker. I take lots of long romantic walks to the fridge. I have hip issues. I have glute issues. I have knee issues. I might even have shoulder issues. That might all be true, but I guarantee you, if you do not know how to actively distribute your weight or on your feet, it's, it's contributing to those issues. Every time you think your postural issues might be something else, check your feet. I guarantee you it's your feet. It's your feet. It's your feet. It's your feet. If there's any me message I can get across on this channel, it's your feet. Check your feet. They tell you so much. So we're going to start there. Okay. So now it's me, still me talking. I just have the camera pointed at my feet so you can see it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our hip, our feet about shoulder width apart. Now, if you're carrying any extra weight, like in your midsection, it might be easier to take your feet out slightly wider than shoulder width, but for the average person, take your feet shoulder width apart. Now I just want you to stand here for a second and think really deliberately about how you're distributing weight on your feet. Are you just going overly forward? Are you pressing into the ball of your foot too much, which is the part you use to point your feet? Are you going backward into your heels too much? Um, how are you distributing your weight laterally within your feet? Are you favoring one side or over another? We all tend to favor our dominant side. I tend to favor my right side and can completely forget to put weight on my left foot even when I'm just standing. So when we're replicating good posture, we don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is have our feet shoulder width apart and we wanna press evenly. We want to evenly distribute our weight through our feet. Once our weight is evenly distributed across our feet, we wanna make sure our weight is evenly distributed on our feet. We don't, like I said, we don't wanna to go too laterally. See, my knees will cave inward. We don't wanna to go too forward. My pelvis will move in all sorts of weird directions. And you don't wanna favor one side or another because that side's gonna get overworked and and the other side isn't going to have any support. And when we do some of these common deviations like standing laterally or putting too much weight forward, we what we do is we take our body out of alignment and by doing this we're deactivating our glutes, we're overactive on one side and we have bad imbalances on the other side. So in order to do this, we want to bring our weight back a bit. We want to push into our heels. We want to make sure there's act we can actually distribute our weight to our heels. So you can see me shake just a little bit here and here and here. And while we're doing this, we still want to push in to the ball of our big toe. And you want to press into the lateral edge of your foot and also the arch of our foot. And we want to press down into that and activate that arch of our foot. This can feel a little bit awkward, especially pressing into that lateral edge and also pressing evenly within your feet. A lot of people just don't know how to do that. So honestly, just practice standing, feet shoulder width apart, everything pointed in a straight line and press into that um, heel, that lateral side of your foot and that arch of your foot, especially the ball of your big toe. 
Once you're doing this, you should feel the arch of your foot activate, and you should notice that the lo your lower half is actually in alignment. This is good. This is what we want to replicate whenever we're doing any sort of standing or standing exercise. I will say one other thing about this as well. For some people like me, if you're a little bit flat footed, um, this will make no sense unless you have shoes with a good arch in them to actually feel through that arch of your foot. I can't recall the number of times that I was kind of wearing an old pair of shoe or trying to do this barefoot like I am now and I'm doing this barefoot so you can kind of get a sense of what my feet are actually doing when I'm pressing through the arch versus collapsing inward like this. Um, I had no idea what that meant until I got a really good pair of shoes with a really good insole. So if you're struggling barefoot, try it with shoes. And if you like have an old pair of shoes or um, you know you're kind of flat footed and maybe want something else, an insole can be really worth investing in or shoes with really good arch support and ankle support. Okay, so still me. Hi, and now we're gonna talk about our knee. So I have the camera angle lower so you can see it. So your knee is a joint or a place where two bones meet and they're connected by a ligament. So if you have knee issues there, you're not like looking specifically at a knee muscle. You're more likely than not looking at the muscles that support it. So your calf muscles, your quad muscles, your glutes, your hips, that will take those two bones in and out of alignment. Now, if you've ever been diagnosed with any sort of knee injury, any kind of ligament tear, um, any kind of kneecap thing, talk to a doctor before trying anything. But when you're looking at your knees, you also have to look at this support system, which is your feet, which is your hips, which is your shoulders. If you're not, if you're pressing laterally like this, your knee is out of alignment. My knee is pointing towards my midsection and not over my middle toes like it should. So we have to, again, make sure we're standing in proper position. You cannot take your feet out of alignment. So pointing right in front of you, pushing into the ball of those feet, pushing into the lateral edges of your feet and saying in front of you, you don't want to collapse inward. We don't want to collapse outward. We want to keep our knees over our middle toes. Our knees kind of have a natural tendency to point inward like mine does on my right side. You have to kind of remember to push into that lateral edge of that foot and to push into the arch of that foot. A lot of knee issues are feet issues. It's feet issues. It's feet issues. It's feet issues. So we're gonna push correctly into it. Now I want, just want you to stand with that good posture and notice what your knees are doing. They're gonna be over the middle toes and they're not going to be collapsing inward, collapsing outward, or in all sorts of ridiculous positions. And we don't wanna be land, leaning too far forward. Now let's see, when we're leaning too far forward, look at what my knee is doing, it's collapsing inward. Another thing with your knees when you're standing in good posture is you don't wanna lock them out. So I have a slight micro bend in my knees here. But if I'm locking them, but if I go like this and lock them out, look at what my pelvis does. It tilts forward. We don't want to do this. I have a little bit of natural anterior pelvic tilt. I sit all day. Most people who sit all day have that. So I'm going from here, which is like not terrible anterior pelvic tilt with my knees slightly bent to locked out where I'm practically tipping over. Hi, guys. And the final thing to remember and the golden rule of this is that you want your ankles, your knee, and your hips all in a straight line or as close as to being in a straight line as you can. Ankles, hips, feet, knees, all in a straight line. You should be able to draw the straightest line you can. All right, so we're got headed up in this world. We're gonna look at our hips next. It's still me, just so you're aware. So now we're gonna talk about our hips. So our hips are a lot like our knees in the sense that they're a joint, there's bones, there's ligament, and a lot of the imbalances with hips can come from the muscles that kind of touch in the greater area of the hips rather than just like one specific hip muscle. So when we're looking at our hips and there can be a lot of different imbalances in your hips, but we're just gonna remember, we're gonna stand with our good posture, evenly distributing our weight, keeping our knees, hips, shoulders, ankles in a straight line, keeping ourselves as upright as possible. And we're basically gonna try to look which way are our hips pointing. Now I mentioned earlier that I have some moderate anterior pelvic tilt. So if you do, your pelvis is pointing forward ever so slightly. And this is not good because this does not engage our core. This deactivates our glutes and this puts a lot of stress on your lower back. This kind of imbalance right here is where you see a lot of lower back things from sitting. Now, some people have the opposite of that where they sway back like this. And this can kind of have the um, opposite effect. So instead of just kind of trying to diagnose every single possible thing that could be wrong with your hip flexors, or um, your glutes or your hamstrings or things like that. We're gonna look at how to get your pelvis 
pointing from here or here into neutral. So the easier thing to do is this. We're going to take our fingers, we're gonna put them on our hip bone, we're gonna take our thumb, we're gonna put it on our rib bone, and we're going to smush our ribs into our hips as far as it will go. This is how you get into a neutral spine. So whenever somebody says, find a neutral spine, and you're going, I don't know what that means. It means you take your fingers to your hip bone, your thumbs to your ribs, and you push them in as much as you can. So I'm gonna go from me standing naturally, so a bit pointed forward, and then I'm gonna do my rib to hip connection. See, 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 see? Did you see the difference? I am in a straight line. Now you might have noticed here, this gets a bit into your core. And you are 100% right with that. So when you're in this position, you also wanna make sure you're activating your core. You always wanna have some degree of core activation. Now, if you're trying to just kind of sit at a desk and type, you don't need to have the most active core in the world or versus when you're trying to pick up a heavy object or you're trying to meet a new PR with your deadlift. You should always have some degree of core activation to protect your back. So we're gonna get, so we're gonna go from our slight, my slight anterior tilt to neutral. And I'm gonna put my hand on my stomach. I wanna make sure you can see this because this is gonna get really dramatic. We're gonna take a big inhale and you all better do this with me. If you saw my core bracing video, you know exactly where I'm going with this. Exhale, <laughs> inhale and exhale. <laughs> Now, while you're doing that, what you're doing is you're activating your transverse abdominus. And your transverse abdominus acts like a belt. You have your six pack muscle, which is your rectus abdominus, and your transverse abdominus wraps around from your rib cage to your belly button like a belt, and it pulls you in and it gets you upright. Now, a lot of times you'll hear on the internet, you need to suck your belly button into your spine. And that's not the worst cue in the world, but nobody understands what that means. And so this is what I do when I hear suck my belly button into my spine. Ugh. See what I did? I brace myself like I'm about to get punched and I stick my pelvis outward. This is wrong. This is bad. You don't want to do this. But here's what I do when I try to activate my TVA and diaphragmatically breathe and my belly button just so happens to go into my spine. <laughs> I'm in the proper alignment. My feet are not doing crazy things. I'm not shifting my weight all over the place. My knees, ankles, and hips are in alignment. I'm, my pelvis isn't tilted forward. It's in as close to neutral as it's going to get. This is what you need to do to activate your core to protect your back regardless of what you're doing. I have injured my back picking up heavy things. I have injured my back in the world's worst work from home setup because I didn't know how to engage my core. Core engagement isn't just something you need to do your PR, to max out, to reach your fitness goals, but also to go through activities of daily life. You don't want to throw out your back typing like me, LOL. And you don't want to also like throw out your back trying to pick up like a heavy Amazon box. You need to understand how to engage your core, how to press through your feet and how that helps keep your body and your pelvis in a straight line. Right. So we're moving up in the world to get to see my pretty face again. So now we're gonna talk about your shoulders and your ribs. So we're in our position, our feet, our hips, our knees, our shoulders, our core are all working like they're supposed to. I want you to look at what you think your ribs are doing, that where your ribs and your shoulders meet specifically. Now, for a lot of people, they don't point in the right direction. They're like this, they're like this. They're doing something where your ribs don't know how to stack on top of your shoulders. This is the next area we're gonna fix. So. For we're gonna keep our feet pushed into the ground. We're going to take our pelvis as in close to neutral as we can get. And we're going to point our ribs down our back and draw our shoulders down our back and together. If you're unable to do this, look, I want you to just stand how you normally stand. So for me, it's a little bit like this. And I want you to watch how your thumb is pointing. For me, it's pointing inward. So let me do this from this angle so you can see it better. I'm standing normally. My ribs are not in the proper position on top of my hips. And I'm lifting my arm up and look at what my thumb's doing. It's pointing inward. But instead of doing this, I get my shoulders accurately on top of my rib cage. I point my thumb up. Look at what it's doing. It's pointing forward. You want your thumb pointing forward. So you, to do this, you need to make sure you're in the proper position, you're bracing your core, and your uh, shoulders are sitting on top of your rib cage. And you're gonna draw your shoulder blades from hunching like this 
to down and together. You have to kind of imagine there's a pulley system on your lower back, pulling your shoulder blades down and together. This is an active movement, it's not passive. Now you may still have tightness in your pecs, you may still have tightness in your lats, you may still have tightness in your upper traps, which are where your neck and your shoulders meet. Stretches for those are all good, but they're not gonna be effective if you can't get your shoulders into the proper position. Posture is only as good as the foundation, and if the foundation isn't there, the exercises aren't gonna be effective. So for any thoracic spine, which is your upper back, exercises to be effective, you have to go from here to pulling those shoulders down your back and together down your back and together. If you think you have any shoulder issues or any shoulder pain, I guarantee you, you have this degree of rib flare. You have to understand how to properly stack your shoulders on top of your ribs. Now, before we do our last exercise, I just wanna remind you all to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and hit that little thumbs up. That really helps with the channel grow with the algorithm. And remember to leave me a comment as well. Last one is our head and our neck. Now we live in a forward head society. Whether it is typing, whether it is um, using the phone, whether it is driving, we are constantly like this. And our, this is not the ideal. The ideal thing is for your ears and your shoulders to be in alignment. If your head is forward like this, you're, look at what your back is doing. Look at what your pelvis is doing. Look at what your feet are doing. They're all out of alignment. You have to be able to suck your head back so your ear is aligned with your shoulder. You should be able to draw a straight line from your shoulder to your ear. Now, if you're someone who constantly has things like tension headaches, shoulder pain, etc., you need to look at the position of your head. Because if your head is forward like this all day, but your shoulders and your upper back are basically bearing the weight of keeping that forward instead of bearing the weight of keeping it in alignment where your ears are on top of your shoulders. If your head's constantly forward, that will put so much strain on your upper back to keep it there that you're just gonna have all this tension you don't feel like you can get rid of. Again, if you're in proper alignment from feet to head, this will be easier, but that alignment has to come first. So this is how to get into alignment. Now, I know this is a lot, but remember, this is a journey. And you can get into a lot more depth than this. I've been studying this for years, but if you're unable to do these things from your feet to your head to get into and to stay into proper alignment as you're working out, as you're doing cardio, as you're adding load, as you're trying to do yoga or mobility, you're not going to make as much progress as you want. You have to be able to use the strong foundation before you can do any other sort of physical activity as effectively as you want to do it. I know this can be really awkward at first or feel really awkward, or it's just something you had no idea how to do or never thought about doing, or it's just not something that comes up in your day-to-day -day routine. But the more you keep practicing these exercises and the more you keep practicing, okay, I'm gonna practice pressing my feet into the ground or doing my rib to hip connection or activating my TVA, you're gonna get far. It can feel awkward, but this is the first important foundational step for any effective fitness program. Thanks everyone. Again, remember to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell and drop me a comment and let me know what you thought. January is how to start for this month on this channel. So last month I did some, so last month, last week, I did some kind of psychological tricks and psychological hacks to get you started on your fitness journey. This week I did kind of your foundational posture 101 and next week, I will talk about how to effectively make a workout plan that works for you and your specific goals. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next week.